Oh, hey guys. Hey y'all, welcome back. Um, here, here's a little update. Uh, I spent a little time this morning. It's uh, January 14th today, uh, Monday. Uh, I got my last day off before I head back to work over in the valley. Uh, so I was uh, doing a little work in the garage this morning, uh, just doing some more preliminary checks on that, uh, that starboard engine uh, that I pulled out yesterday. Uh, I remember I said I was, I was really discouraged by what I found when I pulled that flywheel off in that um, it, it looked like I might uh, might have to do a, a, a major engine rebuild on it because the engine just wouldn't spin it just wouldn't it wouldn't turn freely well I took the uh, uh, I took the uh, my uh, my little bore scope uh, <clears throat> I call it a bore scope it works like a bore scope it's an inspection camera I uh, went down into the cylinders and uh, took a look at the top of the uh, the pistons and uh, I'm, I'm going to try to include that video uh, in with this uh, this post. Uh, uh, top of the pistons all look good. Uh, I, I think what I found is that uh, the reason that the uh, the engine isn't turning freely is <clears throat> those cylinders are just dry. There's, they're really, really dry. There's no oil left on them at all. And uh, there's a fair amount of corrosion uh, on the cylinder walls. So what I'm hoping is that uh, I'll, I'll be able to pull the heads uh, and uh, I'll, I'll pull the, uh, the oil pan and uh, uh, get to the crank, uh, pop the pistons out of it, and just hone the cylinders. Uh, I, I'm thinking that's probably going to take care of it. I'll, I'll let you know when I get to it, but uh, I, I'm thinking that's what I'm going to find. Like I said, I'm going to try to post the video that I took with, uh, with my camera uh, so that you can kind of see what I saw uh, when I went in to take a look at it. Okay, but uh, here's a... Uh, uh, Here's the equipment that I used. Let me show you. It's um, all right. Keep, you'll have to uh, forgive me. I can't see exactly what I'm shooting because I'm shooting all this whole thing with a GoPro. But uh, th this was a pretty handy tool uh, for doing that inspection. Uh, it's called a Whistler inspection camera. Uh, I found this at Home Depot and it was on sale. Yeah, yeah, I bought this thing probably over a year ago. I'm not sure what they are now, but I, I know that there's a number of companies that are selling versions of this uh, out there. Uh, you know, I see them at Home, Home Depot and Lowe's all the time now. Uh, the prices are really coming down. You can probably buy one for less than 150 bucks. And uh, if you're doing any kind of this, any of this kind of work, <clears throat> you know, it's a it, it's a nice tool to have in your arsenal. Uh, it's a it's a, it's a wireless remote, so uh, or monitor. So I, I can turn the camera on uh, you know, here, and if you notice here, it's uh, the uh, uh, the camera itself is uh, <clears throat> is enclosed. It's waterproof. Uh, I don't know how it works with solvents, but you know it's got several LEDs. Uh, looks like it's got four LEDs in the tip of it there uh, that you you can light up the the area that you're inspecting. It's got a very flexible fiber optic cable. Uh, this unit came with an extension, so I've got a, like another three or three and a half foot extension that I can add on to this. And then 
you can you've got two uh, two methods of operating with this. Uh, you can either take this and, and mount it to the the back of the pistol grip uh, assembly, or you you can do it wirelessly. And uh, here's kind of what kind of what it looks like. All right. So anyway, this is. You can see right here. All right, it's uh, it's wireless. This 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 camera, uh, the the monitor, it it, it works uh, oh, probably up to about three or four feet away from the uh, the pistol grip. Uh, you know, I guess that's where the, uh, I, I'm not sure what's in there, but you know, the, you can separate these two units by about about three or four feet, which is which is pretty handy in in some situations. Uh, so anyway, uh, looked like the cylinder walls were, were were just were just really really dry, and so like I said, I'm hoping uh, it's not going to be a major engine rebuild. <coughs> okay, uh, I told you, yeah, I found a lot of corrosion in there. Okay, so uh, I, I I'd said initially yesterday that uh, you know when I pulled the plugs, I looked at the plugs. Uh, you can tell an awful lot about the way that an engine's running uh, by the condition of the plugs. Uh, if you go online and look, uh, there, there's there, there's a number of places that you can find this. Uh, but depending on what the what kind of buildups you have on the spark plugs, uh, you know that will be like a legend, or it will, t it will tell you how the engine's running. Whether you've got a lean cylinder or a rich cylinder, well, a, a lean cylinder typically has a very uh, very light or white colored residue uh, on the electrode. Uh, and on the, uh, the the spark spark plug mass itself, uh, it, what what I found was you know there there was a lot of white residue on there, and I was thinking well that 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 cylinder was running lean, but on closer inspection, and after having looked at what was in the cylinders as far as the corrosion, these, this engine hasn't been run for a long time, obviously. Uh, that white material, that white powder that I saw was was more than likely corrosion. All right, here's here's what the spark plugs look like. Okay, all right. These are the plugs that I took out, and as you can see, uh, this this one is very very dark. There's a lot of carbon deposits built up on that. Uh, that's an indication of a uh, uh, of a rich cylinder. There's there's too much fuel being burned in that cylinder. Same thing with this one. Uh, this one I kind of brushed uh, brushed off the electro uh, uh, the, the spark plug body, the mass a little bit, so it's not quite as white. But th this, this is what it originally looked like. I don't know if you can see that very well, but you know, th there's a lot of white powder on there. Uh, but the electrode itself and the ceramic is is pretty black, which kind of leads me to believe that it was probably running the same condition as this spark plug. Uh, the cylinder was probably running pretty rich, but the white powder I think is just is just corrosion because you can you can just about wipe it off, just about wipe it off. See, so I'm I'm thinking that uh, there was probably corrosion that I saw, and uh, and, <clears throat> and not really a cylinder running lean. If the cylinder if you've got a lean cylinder, you're going to look around the ceramic. Uh, of the spark plug, and it's going to be very, very brown, just you know, almost as brown as the uh, uh, the maple top that I've got on my toolbox here. So it'll be very brown. Uh, so, so anyway, I'm, I'm I'm thinking that the cylinders are they're rich. I'd rather have the engine running rich than having it running lean, because if it's running lean, uh, you you run the chance of uh, you know burning valves. Uh, if it's lean, uh, cylinder uh, temperatures are going to be a, be much higher. And so, okay, so I'm, uh, I'd much rather have it running rich, like I said. Okay, so uh, that that's it uh, for for right now. Uh, oh, uh, one other thing, I'll I'll kind of kind of show you what I what I did over in this one corner of my garage. I'm still I'm still got an area over here that I'm trying to get cleaned out to make for a bigger shop space for me to to. To, to lay out some sawhorses and uh, you know a uh, big tabletop with some plywood, so I, I've got a, a bigger work area uh, when it gets to that point, especially when I get to these engines over here. But uh, I, I was able to get the uh, 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 the, uh, the blasting cabinet in place, so I've kind of got it set up over in, the, in this corner here. I've got some new lighting that's going in here. I'll probably do that this afternoon. Uh, this uh, this blasting cabinet came with uh, you know so I got it with uh, the the dust collector system. It works really really good. 
I got rid of the uh, the, the silica sand, uh, under, which I stored underneath there. I, I dropped it out of the hopper and I put it in the uh, in that container and, and, and stuffed it away there. And, you know, I might want to use it. I don't. Uh, I'm not a big fan of using real sand. I mean, it works great, but uh, because there's so much silica in uh, in sandblasting sand, uh, you really need to be using a respirator when you're using that. It causes a lot of that, that silica getting in your lungs. It's just not good for you. So what I did, uh, I went down to Home Depot and I bought this material. It's a Central Pneumatics brand. It's um, an aluminum oxide um, uh, blasting material and that produces a lot less dust and I went with a 70 grit uh, on the, uh, the sandblasting material on the media and I'll, I'll kind of show you what it what it did here. Uh, here, here. Here's a piece of steel that, that I did uh, just this morning just to kind of test it out. Let me get the sun so you can kind of see it. But there's the, uh, uh, it had some zinc chromate primer on it. Uh, so, yeah, I did that. And if you look at that, that's, that's a really, really nice finish. It's kind of a matte finish. Uh, it's not perfectly polished and it's not perfectly smooth, which, which, which is good uh, because you know, that creates you know, on a, almost a microscopic level uh, a more area for the primers to, uh, to adhere to. So I, I'm thinking that's going to work really, really good. Now this is a piece of mild steel. Uh, uh, I'll have to test it out a little bit more on aluminum uh, to make sure it's going to work good with aluminum, but I'm pretty sure it will. So that, that 70 grit aluminum oxide uh, there it creates a lot less dust. It's 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 not it's, it's not as much of a health hazard, and uh, it it should last a lot longer. So anyway, that's that's kind of it for for right now. Uh, I'm going to try to do a little bit more here today. I've got uh, I've got some stuff in my garage. Uh, I'm trying to do. Uh, I used to fly a, a RC an awful lot, and. Uh, one of the things I got to do is I got to figure out where to store all of my models. You know, I, I had to, I, I had to take them off the wall. I had I had them stored up here. Uh, they were all stacked up. That was getting in my way here of, uh, of being able to use the top of my toolbox. So uh, I'm going to reposition them all, all along the uh, this this beam here uh, in the garage. So uh, figure out how to get those stored up here. Uh, so we're going to do that today. Like I said. Work in progress, trying to get the get the garage set up to where I can really get into some serious work. Okay, well, I think that's about it for right now. Uh, I'll uh, uh, I'll be posting more as uh, as we progress. And uh, so anyway, that's it. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, talk to you later. Bye. Hey guys. Hey, one one last thing before I um uh, uh, close down for today here. But uh, you remember in the past, some of the, from the previous videos, I, I talked to you about these gloves that I found, uh, you know, at the hardware store. Uh, Home Depot's got them. Lowe's has probably got them. Uh, they're called uh, Gorilla Grip gloves. I'll tell you what, guys. I, I am totally sold uh, on, on these gloves. All right, here's it's a uh, Gorilla Grip gloves. You know the uh, the, the top the top of the glove is got like this uh, flexible uh, nylon mesh on it. Uh, the top of the fingers and the bottoms, the palms. Uh, I've got like it's just, it's the the, the the nylon mesh uh, it's impregnated with this neoprene material. I know they kind of look like those Dr. No gloves, don't they? In the James Bond movie. But well, I, I'll tell you what, guys. These uh, these, these things are amazing. Uh, you know, I, I'm using these anytime I come to the shop you know, in the garage here. I'm, I'm working on the on the boat or uh, uh, you know pretty much anywhere in the garage right now. I'm wearing these gloves. Uh, not only do they uh, they protect your hands a little bit, uh, and, you know, help help keep your hands clean, but they're just so useful. Uh, they, they they work so well. Uh, it's like uh, uh, they they fit they, they fit almost like surgical gloves, maybe even a little bit better. Uh, probably adds maybe another twenty thousandths of an inch, you know, all the way around your hand, but they're so like so super useful. I mean. You know, for example, I mean, you know, with a regular pair of mechan mechanics gloves, and you know, I've I've got I've got a couple pairs of those. You know, with the the thick leather leather, leather tips and stuff. I've I've used those in the past for some jobs. They're great, but 
you know, for if you're dealing with small parts, I mean, you know, try, try to do that, you know, with uh, with a pair of the uh, uh, you know the regular mechanics gloves. I mean, this is this is this is a 1032 light washer, a very, a very thin washer. It's probably no more than about 32 thousandths of an inch thick, but you know, picking this thing up is like no problem. Um, really, really cool gloves. You know, so I, I'm not I'm not a salesperson or a spokesman, you know, for for Gorilla Grip. But, uh, you know, I, I can tell you that they work really, really well. Uh, you know, uh, you, especially if, if you're dealing with anything that has any oils or greases on it. Uh, if you try to use those uh, surgical gloves that, uh, you know, I've got a whole, I've got a whole you know, ton of those. I, you know, at work, I, I, every time every hospital I go into, I, I, I grab a bunch of pairs and I throw them in my flight suit. And, uh, you know, I, I bring them home, you know, keep a stock of those here all the time. But... Uh, you know those, those things when you when you get involved with any oils or greases they're super slippery and they, they break a lot you know they're always breaking uh, but uh, these things uh, you know they uh, if it's got oil or if it's got grease on it you can still grip it and you, boy, I, I just find that so useful and so handy so anyway that's just Randy's tip take it for what it's worth and uh, you know uh, that's probably it for today. I'm going to continue to work on the garage a little bit more and uh, try to get my workspace squared away. But uh, anyway, that, that's kind of it for now. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later. All right. Bye.